All right, so now we're going to continue the um, 5.8, looking at some word problems. And um, I'm going to do a couple of them, and then I'm going to try to get you to do a couple of them. And then come back and check and see if you had set them up okay. So let's see. I think I'll do 46 and 49 all the way through. And then I want you to try 42 and 47. Okay. So actually 42 has a little tricky thing in it. Let me do 42 and 49. And then I'll get you to do 46 and 47. And then... You can come back and check and see if you were thinking about that correctly. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at 42. 42 says from a point on level ground, 30 yards from the base of a building, the angle of elevation is 38.7 degrees. Okay. So I've got some building sitting here. And then I'm 30 yards from the base of the building. Angle of elevation means you're kind of looking up from a point to the top of the building. They're talking about the angle of elevation. They're talking about that right there being 38.7 degrees. And this right here is 30 yards. And then they say approximate the height of the building. So here's your building sitting here, okay? And so they want you to approximate the height. Let me put a little H on that. Ooh, that's tricky. They said to the nearest foot, okay? To the nearest foot. So if they want it to the nearest foot, then I actually have to make a conversion here. Shouldn't need to do too many of these kind of problems that involve conversions. So this one's not too bad. So there's three feet in a yard, right? So I do want to take the 30 yards... And I can do kind of like what we did when we changed from degrees to radians. I want to get yards out of there and feet in there. So that tells me I need to multiply, and that would turn out to be 90 feet. Okay? So that equals 90 feet. All right, and since I want the height to be in feet, I'm going to use the 90 when I set up my ratio. So now I'm looking at this angle. I have the side opposite, and then this is the adjacent side. So that would be tangent of the 38.7 equals the um, H over the 90. almost wrote it the other way around. And so I'm going to multiply both sides by 90 to get my H. And so it will equal 90 times the tangent of 37 degrees. And 90 tangent 37, oops, that's not it, 90 tangent 38.7 turns out to be, and let's see, it says to the nearest foot, that turns out to be 72 feet. So it's about 72 feet high. Okay. So pretty straightforward, except for the fact that it had the unit conversion thing that you had to do. Okay. All right, so you're going to set up 46 and 47 and work those out. Uh, let me go ahead and take a look at 49. All right, so on 49, we got a picture for us, so that helps a lot. So this looks like those triangle things we did before. Um, so I, I think I'm going to go ahead and do, instead of 49, I think I'll let you work that out and then come back and we'll check each other. Let me go ahead and look at 46 and see if we can get the picture drawn on it. This one has a police helicopter flying at 800 feet. So it's up here high, flying along at a height of 800 feet. A stolen car is sighted at an angle of depression of 72 degrees. Find the distance of the stolen car to the nearest foot from a point directly below the helicopter. Okay, so here's going to be my helicopter right here. 
Okay. And then it cites this car down here. So angle of depression this time. So that is 72 degrees. And then it says, find the distance of the, oh, and this right here, this is the stolen car. Okay. It says, find the distance of the stolen car from a point directly below the helicopter. So if I go below the helicopter right here. So they want to know this right here. That's what I'm looking for. So the helicopter is flying at 800 feet, so we actually know it that that has to be 800 feet. And we know this angle of depression is 72 degrees. So there's a couple things you can do with that. Those of you that know your geometry might recognize that this angle right here would be 72. That's alternate interior angles. Or you might notice that that has to be 90. So you know this inside here has to be 18. Almost wrote 28. It has to be 18 degrees right there. So you could have done either of those. I said this, this has to be 90, so I know that, that angle right there has to be 18. Or you could say if this angle is 72, then I know because they're alternate interior angles that this one down here has to be 72. Okay, so this might have been the most natural thing for you to think. And then you have 800 given to you and you have the X that you're looking for. So it's, it looks like tangent again. And so it'd be tangent of 18 equals the X over the 800, opposite over adjacent. And then you'll, you'll finish working that one out. Okay. All right, so you should pause the video right now and then work out the rest of 46, 47, 49, and then play it and see if you, if, if you worked them out okay. So I would pause the video and finish 46 and then set up 47 and work out 49 and see if you've got this, okay? All right, so I'm just gonna continue now, but you stop the video and go ahead and do that work be before you come back and watch the rest of it. So this one I'm gonna just, multiply 800 times the tangent of 18 degrees. And I wind up getting about 260 said to the nearest foot. Yeah. So this turns out to be about 260 feet. Okay. All right. Now for 47, you got a ramp that's to be built beside the steps to the campus library, find the angle of elevation of the 23 foot ramp to the nearest 10th of a degree if its final height is six feet. So let me just kind of imagine my ramp, okay, going up to the a building, going up to the top of the steps. Here's my ramp, okay, and it says, Find the angle of elevation of the 23 foot ramp. So the ramp itself is 23 feet. Okay. If its final height is six, so this would be six feet. And we want the angle of elevation, which would be this guy right here. This is what we're looking for is that theta. And that would be a right angle. So that means I can do all, use all my right angle information. So opposite over hypotenuse, that would be sine of theta would equal 6 over 23. They're both in the same unit, luckily, so I didn't have to do any kind of conversion. 6 divided by 23 is about 0 0.2609 if I ran, round to four decimal places. But I actually keep them all in my calculator. And then when I do this part to get theta... I don't just use 0.2609, really. I've got all the rest of it on my calculator. I just do second sine to get sine inverse, and then I do second function to bring up my answer that I had before. So it's actually more than just that. And this turns out to be, what did it say? To the nearest tenth of a degree. This turns out to be 15.1 degrees. Okay. 
All right, now 49, we could have drawn it, but I'm glad the picture was already there. It's a little more complicated. So we got this hot air balloon that's just rising straight up from a point on the ground. It's 120 feet, five feet. Okay. Okay, so from a point on the ground under the, the passenger compartment. Okay. We've got this point 120 feet, five feet from that. We have the angle of elevation to the balloon changing. So it, it was only 19.2. And then as the balloon was rising vertically, that angle of elevation from this point, 125 feet away from where the balloon took off, um, turned out to be 31.7 degrees. And then the question is, how far to the nearest tenth of a foot does the balloon rise during this period? So we just want to know from there to there, okay? That's what we're looking for. That's going to be our unknown, okay? All right, so that's what we're looking for. And so we're going to study that picture and wind up utilizing two right triangles. Going to utilize the bigger one, that has the 31.7 in it with the right angle here and the one with a smaller angle is contained within it. It's 19.2 degrees with the right angle in it. Okay. And neither of those has just X, right? But if I could find this guy, let me call him A, that would be all the way from there to the ground. That's my A. And then find this guy, which I'll call B. Then I could just take A minus B to get my X. So it's like one of the ones we, we did earlier without all the words. So 125 is this along the ground, 125 feet. That's on both of them. Looks like tangent it would be involved on both of those. So I'll do the tangent of 31.7 degrees. That would be A over 125. So A would equal 125 tangent of 31.7. And B, it's going to be similar. The tangent of 19.2 degrees would be B over 125. And so B would equal um, 125 tangent of 19.2 degrees. Okay? And so... I'm just going to type in 125 tangent, um, 125 tangent 19.2. I'm in degree mode. And I get about 43.53. And then I'm just going to go back up where I typed that in and change the 19.2 to 31.7 and see what that turns out to be. Turns out to be 77.20. And then to find the X, I'm just going to subtract the 77.20 and the 43.53. And I wind up with 33.67 six, seven, about, and it said how far to the nearest tenth of a foot, so I'll round to there, um, so that would be 33.7 feet, and there you have it. All right, so up until now, those were all just problems where you're um, solving right triangles. At the beginning, all we were doing was solving finding the missing sides and angles. Okay, then with 30 to 36, we had some triangles that were connected in some way, either overlapping one inside the other one, and we had to find some various missing pieces. So we had to think about how to set those up. Okay, and it was very important that you made use of the right triangles that were contained in the picture. And then that was true here as well. These were just four where I had to draw some of the pictures but um, they, they just involved right triangles. And then 49 was kind of like what we were doing in 30 through 36. And thankfully, they drew the picture for us because that would have been a bit of a challenge to draw. Okay. 
So let me end that, and then I'm going to do the last video for 5.8. It's going to be on a particular class of problems called bearing problems. So we'll work through some of those, okay?